What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at another e-bike. This is the V-Volt Alpha. Taking a look at the specs, this bike has a 350 watt rear hub motor, a 10.4 amp hour battery, a Gates CDN belt drive system, 27 by 2 inch tires, hydraulic brakes with 166 millimeter rotors, and is very lightweight weighing only 44 pounds. With most e-bikes, the unboxing process is pretty much the same where you have to open the box and lift the bike out from the top. And considering how heavy e-bikes can get, this can be quite the struggle to do at times. But with this one, they actually have a unique boxing method where the bike easily slides off from the side, making everything a whole lot easier. While this may seem like something minor, often it's minor touches like this that can separate an average e-bike company from a great e-bike company. I don't care what you sell or offer, but as a business, your number one priority should always be customer satisfaction. And based off this alone, V-Volt is definitely off to a great start. Everything inside the box was very well protected and I was happy to see there was no damage or scratches anywhere on the bike. As far as assembly goes, this was by far one of the easiest assemblies I've done on any e-bike so far. All you had to do was slip on the front tire and install the pedals. No screws or anything else to mount as everything was already done and assembled in the box. What's cool is that Vivo doesn't just ship the bikes out directly after they arrive from the factory, but actually unbox and inspect everything is good before shipping out to the customer. Beside this, they also make sure all the bolts have the proper torque settings and even go as far as making sure the seat is leveled. Again, this is not something a lot of e-bike companies do, so it's great to see them actually going above and beyond to ensure everything goes as smoothly as possible for the customer. Another thing is while most other companies use zip ties to hold everything down, these guys actually use quality Velcro straps instead. So again, a lot of extra attention to make this all as easy as possible. Inside the box beside the bike, you also get a party box. That's right, not an accessories box, but what Vivo calls a party box. Inside this box, you have the manual, and then under that, you have your keys, the pedals, a rechargeable front headlight, and USB charging cables so you can charge your bike lights. Taking a look at the bike itself, the one I have here is their slate color, which is a very nice color. I much prefer a dark gray color or something like this one over something like a basic all matte black. Overall, they're pretty similar, but grays like this just stand out a little more and have a little more character. The frame also looks very low profile. And honestly, from a distance, it would be hard to even tell this was an e-bike. This bike does not have built-in lights, but they do include both a rechargeable headlight as well as a rechargeable tail light. As I've said many times before, most integrated e-bike lights usually aren't that great anyways, so I really don't mind this compromise. One of my favorite features is how the battery mounts on this bike. Most e-bikes do it from the bottom, but this one does it from the top, which makes it a whole lot easier to insert and remove. It also mounts flush with the down tube, so honestly, unless you're looking at it up close, you can't really tell there's even a battery there. Overall, it really helps give the bike a very sleek and low profile design. Since this is a single speed bike, which also does not have a throttle, this really helps clean up the front bar so you have very little wires coming off the front. This bike has radius hydraulic brakes and I really like what they have on the brake levers. So you can see right here, there's a little red dial and you simply turn that so you can move the lever further or closer to the bars to get a position that feels best and most comfortable to you. While you can do this on any bike, typically it would require tools, but this one you can just turn the dial and easily fine tune it at any time. Taking a look at the screen, this is definitely one of the smallest screens I have seen on e-bikes so far. I do like a nice large color screen, but also don't mind a low profile design like this one either. At the end of the day, as long as I see the information I need, that's all that really matters is I spend most of the time looking at the road anyways, and not at the screen. Like most of you, I deal with a ton of morons simply because I choose to ride an e-bike. I personally don't mind it and simply shrug it off, but I know this can bother some people. But with a bike like this one with a much smaller screen, overall low profile design, chances are you have a lot less issues as most people won't even notice this is an e-bike. Despite being a very small screen, it actually has a hidden USB port at the side which you can use to charge your front headlight or your phone directly from the bike's battery. As I said earlier, this bike has a carbon gates belt drive system which is a night and day difference compared to regular bike chains. Not only are they very quiet and much smoother to pedal with, but they also last twice as long and require little to no maintenance. 
Lastly, the seat on this bike is more like a road bike seat. Personally, I prefer a larger and more plush seat, so I'll probably be switching this out. But for now, I'll leave it as is and see how it feels. Oh, this is a very, very smooth bike, kid. I hate these belt drive e-bikes simply because every time I go back on my regular chain driven e-bike, it just feels so clunky and not as smooth. And I kind of feel like a peasant when I'm riding my chain e-bike. And then when I get on one of these, it's like riding on a cloud. Like you feel no resistance in the chain. It's just so smooth. Like I've said before, you don't even feel like you're on a bike. You feel like you're pedaling something like a exercise machine or exercise bike. Right now I have pedal assist off and I'm able to pedal this completely fine without any problems. So being how smooth and easy it is to pedal this bike, this makes it a very nice uh, hybrid between an e-bike and a regular bike because if I wanted to, I could just go out without my pedal assist and get a nice workout but at the same time, I have to be overstraining myself. These grips are also very nice. Nice uh, ergonomic grips. Very uh, soft and rubbery feeling. Overall, this is a pretty comfortable bike to ride. You're not sitting completely upright like you would be on some commuter e-bikes, but you're also not really aggressively forward like on a road bike. You're kind of in between. There is a little bit of a forward lean with this seating position but still pretty comfortable and honestly I prefer to be somewhat of a slight lean because when you're sit completely straight upright that's actually not good for your posture and you're gonna get tired from riding a lot more when you have a slight forward lean some of the pressure is taken off of your butt and transferred to your hands so you kind of get a half and half distribution of your weight with half of your weight being held up by the bars and then the other half by the seat so I think it's a, a very good seating position and one I definitely prefer and that was a bit of a workout because there was a slight uphill over there and I still don't have the motor on right now I'm just enjoying this bike on a regular bike mode getting a nice little workout brakes definitely work pretty good pretty quiet too some e-bikes when you first get them, they have a loud screech until they break in, but these, you can hear the rubbing, but it's very minimal and overall they're very quiet. This e-bike is a class one e-bike. The only difference between a class one and a class two is the class one doesn't have a throttle, but class one and class two are both limited to 20 miles per hour. And then you have a class three, which has a throttle and can also go up to 28 miles per hour. Where I live near Chicago, there's not any restrictions on e-bikes yet, and hopefully it stays that way unless some morons start going too fast on bike paths and mess it up for everybody, which I feel eventually is going to happen. But for now, there's no restrictions. So regardless if you're a regular bike or a class three bike, you can ride pretty much anywhere where bikes are allowed to go. There is some states though that restrict where you can take a class two or class three e-bike. So if you do happen to be in one of those areas, with a bike like this one, you're going to be able to go to the most places. It's going to have the least amount of restrictions. You might still have some restrictions. I don't know. The laws vary place to place. But if there are restrictions, most likely you're going to have the least restrictions with the Class 1 because you don't have a throttle and it can't go more than 20 miles per hour. This is also a very, very quiet motor. Right now I have uh, pedal assist finally turned on. I have it set to pedal assist one, which puts you at about 10 miles per hour, looks like maximum. And I can hear the motor very, very slightly, but overall it's pretty silent. And thanks to the belt drive, you don't hear the chain at all. So this makes for a very nearly silent ride. All right, let me go ahead and switch it to pedal assist two. Kicks in very smoothly as well. It's not like a very sudden burst that's gonna catch you off guard. Has a nice gradual increase, which is the preferred way because I know some people like the torque, but when you're on pedal assist, I think it's best to give you that power slightly. So just in case if you do accidentally take off, you have time to react and you don't instantly fly into a wall or crash into somebody. So pedal assist two with casual pedaling. 
Looks like it tops out about 13, 13.3. To me, this feels like the sweet spot cruising speed. When you're just riding around the city, going on a quick errand or something, you just want to go on a nice relaxing ride. I think number two is where that'll be at. All right, switch up to number three. Still very gradually increases, but a little bit more torque on this one. All right, you can't test out the speed here. It's a bit too bumpy. Surprisingly, even though that area was very bumpy, there's a bunch of cracks in the road. It wasn't that bad of a ride. You would expect it to be very harsh considering this bike does not have any front or rear suspension, but actually feels uh, not bad. I mean, we do feel those bumps, but it's nowhere as bad as I thought it would be. And if you did want to add a little bit of cushion to the seat, you could always add a seat post suspension for a hundred bucks or so. And that'll give you a nice and plush ride. But even as is, not a big deal. Right now I'm riding over another street, which also has very bad roads as you can see. And uh, it's not too bad, it's not intolerable. All right, let me find a not horrible street so I can test this pedal to speed. Number three. All right, nice clean road here. All right, pedal assist three. Looks like it's taking me about 15.5 to 16, depending how much I'm pedaling. At this speed, I'm starting to feel like I'm losing resistance in the pedals. I'm not quite ghost pedaling yet, but uh, it's almost getting there. All right, switch it up to number four. Good amount of torque, which is uh, rather surprising considering this is only a 350 watt bike. It feels very similar to my 500 watt. Uh, decent amount of pedaling, it looks like I'm going about 16. Switch it up to number five. All right, if I really push it, you can get 20 miles per hour. If I'm riding casually, it's more close to 17, 18. When you hit 20, you're definitely pedaling like a hamster, but if you really want to push it, you can get 20 miles per hour in this bike. Overall, the seat's not too bad. I thought it was going to be uh, more uncomfortable, but despite being a more narrow seat, it has a good amount of cushion to it. So I might just leave it with the seat after all. As far as range goes, this bike is rated to have 20 to 40 miles of range, and that seems like a very honest estimate. Some of these companies say some crazy numbers like 50 to 100 but that's always assuming that you're going like three miles per hour to get that top number but realistically if you're riding like on pedal assist one the entire time you're going to get that 40 and then if you're going 18 to 20 you're probably going to get about 15 to 20 miles of range so it's good to see they actually have a uh, pretty honest estimate on there so yeah 13.99 this bike is definitely a great value for what you're getting Especially when you consider this is not just a regular class 1 e-bike, but it has that belt drive, which is very smooth. No maintenance needed. I hate having to flip my bike upside down and degrease my chain and clean all the crud and then put the oil on it. It doesn't take too long, but to me it just feels a bit tedious. And with this one, you don't have to do that. Just every once in a while, maybe just clean off the belt, dry it off, and that's it. Definitely a good bike. This company also sells a few more bikes that look pretty identical frame-wise. They all have the same kind of low profile, almost not an e-bike kind of look. But the other ones mostly have mid-drive motors and that's gonna give you a lot more torque, a lot more power. I didn't, I didn't look at the specs for those too much, so I don't know what those top out at, but those are definitely more uh, premium bikes and the price uh, reflects that. I think they're about $1,000 more, somewhere around there. If you want a good mid-level e-bike that's gonna go most of the speeds you'll need for all casual riding, go with one of these. If you live in a hilly area and you need uh, more torque and want a little bit more of a natural pedaling because that's what the mid-drives get, you might wanna look at one of those instead. But All right, well overall, it's definitely a solid bike. If you guys have any questions, as usual, definitely drop me a comment and let me know and I'll do what I can to help. Otherwise, uh, Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.